Adrian. How are you? Hi. Hi, George. I know you've been busy, but I have a few questions for you. So if I don't okay. get to ask it in this one, then I'll I'll write to you about it. So here's the thing with the question about the students not showing up. Yeah. There's a disconnect between the student domain names being in there. So um, almost all of us are having to copy their um, their email address and paste it into the add a member. I'll show you that when I get into oh, it, okay. but it's, it's almost all everyone that I did. I've had to paste in. So oh. uh, because um, the faculty side is the domain that that we're logging into okay. and the students are in a different domain. That's why they come in as guests. OK, so I've got to jump to a couple more uh, questions that are popping up on my screen here, so I'll okay. be back in a minute. Okay. Hey, George. George, before you leave, can you send Don Merkovich an invite? He apparently can't get in with whatever he has. OK, so let me just uh, before I send him another invite. Is there a way that you can communicate with him while I'm getting set up to do the presentation? I tried and I could not help him. I, I think he's out oh. in the woods. No, he's in the machine. He's in the, that's Dan Mangalot. OK, no, no, Don Merkovich. OK. <laughs> Yeah, Dan's fine. I, I, you know, I have total confidence in Dan. It's, it's Don Merkovich that has problems. Okay. Thanks. Well, as soon as I get myself ready for this meeting, I will reach out to him. Hey, hey, Len, this is Lulu. If you click on the um, participant list, right, and then go up in the upper right hand corner, there's like two little links. Um. And you can copy that link and try to send it to him again. Okay. Um, that actually worked the other day for me. Where do, where do I get the participant list? So if you click on sort of um, look and see where your your camera is, and then the mic, and then the share button, right? You see in that? Yep. The three dots, and then there's yep. the chat, the little purple with two people. Click on that, and uh, the the participant gotcha. list. And then up in the corner, there's two little links. Copy that and email it to him, and that should help. That's how I got in last time. Two links in the participant list. Oh, I see. The up at the top the said yeah. invite someone or dial a number. Just right. copy that and email it to him. OK. Yeah. All right, sounds good, thanks. Sure. <clears throat> Hi, Mike Stepner. Hi, Kurt. Steve, uh, Matt, uh, are you still on there, Steve Clayton? I'm still here, but I can't. Uh, I can't talk. Why not? We just heard you. We well, did. Well, my microphone. Yeah. My microphone is off. How about my video? Do you see me? Yeah, we can, see we you. can hear you too. We were wondering what you were eating for lunch. Yeah. Chewing gum, Chewing gum and coffee. Tilt, tilt that screen. We can see the food. Yep. So why, <laughs> why, can't, why can't I turn off my camera? And why can't I turn off my microphone? Or to, my, my, it's nuts. You're having nuts for lunch? No, I said <laughs> I can't. George, you still have your uh, sense he, of humor. He said he is nuts. Come here, George. <laughs> <clears throat> Can't mute my microphone. Hmm. So I'm muting you right now. Now He's you're muted. muted. <laughs> so see if you can unmute yourself. Nope. Mm -hmm. Doesn't look good. So if I go over here, 
I can mute him. Okay, we've only got about. Oh, okay, there's quite a few in already. 24. Oh, nice. Chris Clark. Okay, I'm going to push the Chris. mute off for a second here. And um, oh, I'll shut myself up. Okay, Steve, can you hear me? Nod your head. Okay. When was the last time you uh, rebooted your computer? That would be my guess, is you probably need to do a reset. But you can do it after the meeting. Okay, we will read your lips. Or just use the chat. If you have anything to say, just use the chat feature. Excellent suggestion. So, Lulu, I heard your voice on there before. You're up and ready? Here, yep. Okay, and Len, were you able to get that off to Don? Uh, let's see. Copy the clipboard. And email to Markovich. Um, George. Yes. How did you do that? Because I, I had the same message clipped to, um, I'm sorry, copied to clipboard, but I could not see the link. So up here, when I clicked on copy in join info, do you see it on my screen? I believe I'm sharing that screen. No, you're not? not sharing your screen. We're seeing all the participants. Okay. Let me go back to sharing my screen. And, uh, and are you recording this? Yes. Okay, good. And one of you must be arriving by motorcycle. Okay, so as Lulu said, if you click on the participants icon, that's the two little dudes over here or do that. And up in the upper right hand corner, you see the little double link. You yeah. click on it, it just yeah. says copied to clipboard. So it's already on your clipboard. So when I went to the email for Don, I then um, just control V pasted it into the email oh. and off it went. Okay, oh great, okay, thank you. Yep, so that's a simple way when you're in the meeting and if somebody's either doesn't have their Outlook open or their meeting open, but we do also have, if we go into our teams, like for this one, we are in faculty meetings. And um, so today's. Yep, I'm not seeing it in there right now. But copying that link is an easy dark band in your message. Pardon me? Uh, isn't that that dark band in your message? No, that's a canceled one. Oh. That was when we were, you know, I have been experimenting and learning and falling off cliffs and climbing back up and doing all of those things 20 hours a day for the last two weeks to learn enough about teams to be able to help you all. So um, so that's kind of what I'm doing is uh, 
learning this stuff by just be trying to be a little bit ahead. So, um, but in, when we look at our, at the people band, as long as you know that in your classroom, let's just go to the classroom. So if this was the beginning of your class and you wanted to see who all was in, you can do your attendance this way. You could open your banner and you could take your attendance right at that point. Or if you found somebody who just emailed you or messaged you that they couldn't get in, you can copy the link and send it to them right away so that they can get get into it. So, um, well, welcome everybody. I'm glad to see that everybody's here. Um, I want you to be aware that um, we only touched on this at the end of the meeting on Tuesday. So I'm going to dive into it a little bit more is we have a group that's called the Hub for Faculty at New School. And all of you are members of the Hub for Faculty. And we are working with Lucy to build the library of teaching resources in here. And one of the things that we have done is we put some links to training session videos, some of the guidelines and things that you have, some of the Blackboard help, but if you want to review, if you were not able to attend the Tuesday meeting or the Wednesday meeting, here is a link to the uh, videos for those. And then today I did a test class in Teams with a group of six students who participated. And this is a little 16 minute video of that class where I did a little bit of lecturing. We did a, uh, a a group discussion, one person at a time by using the chat board and each one of them coming up and talking. And then we also did an open discussion uh, with the group. So it's a very useful way to spend 16 minutes and see how that can and should work. So we are going to continue to add content to the teaching resources, both in snippet videos where instead of you having to look at an hour long video, we might have 10 uh, three minute videos with specific titles. And those we're gonna try and get put together here over the next 48 hours. So um, that's a little bit about where I am and I'm going to turn it over to, um, to Lulu and uh, we're gonna jump back into um, into Blackboard. I think um, the three points that I came up with, Lulu, that were um, were kind of notes taken out of our last meeting was mm -hmm. managing, managing the grade book, understanding the difference between discussions and forums. Okay. Yeah. And then I will do, I don't think we'll do it today, but I'm gonna try and do something so we've got it for the um, um, for the resource room, but a piece on uh, team project grading within uh, assignments and stuff. So, uh, so I'm gonna turn it over to you and let you, let me stop sharing and you can have the screen. Okay, I will try to be uh, pithy and short with this and do the best I can with the Blackboard system that is not the one I'm usually on. But uh, I know some of you guys from before. Hi, Chris. Nice to see you again. Let me start sharing my screen. It's been super interesting with all of this online learning new, new systems. Um, and trying to make it work somehow. Can you see my screen, George? Yes, I can. And let me just mention to everybody who's in the meeting, if you can shut your video off, it will give a little more bandwidth to Lulu for doing our presentations. So if you can park your video for right now, that would be terrific. Yeah, and audio too. I mean, and just in general, I saw some people were talking about Banner. Um, I think one thing to recognize 
Uh, and just so everybody knows, for, for, for full disclosure, I also have a full-time job. I'm, I'm here helping NSAD because I um, worked on some projects, an online uh, project with you guys for three years, um, which Chris worked on um, with the school in India, and it was completely online. I've been working totally online for 12 years, but um, I have another full-time job now, which is at a brick-and-mortar university, and so we've also been putting everything online for the, you know, the last two weeks and uh, uh, the students came back last, or this last Monday. Um, so one of the things that we're seeing um, is just overload on systems um, that normally don't have this much activity. So I would say, um, you know, things like Blackboard in general, Banner, um, a lot, you know, even the Microsoft Teams, there might be times when uh, it's a lot slower than you're expecting. Also, just like in my neighborhood, uh, where a lot of the professors live, um, my Wi-Fi is a lot slower than typically. Even when I was watching Netflix last night, the, the Wi-Fi was really slow. So just be aware of the high use times. And, um, you know, uh, just if it's slow, that could very well be why. Uh, so there you go. Um, I'm going to go over a few things. So the first thing I want to say is, um, I am using a course from last year uh, just as sort of a showcase. I would recommend if you're not used to uh, working in Blackboard that instead of, you might want to practice just on, a, on another um, shell that you have so that you're not um, sort of doing things in your current course that you may uh, need to delete or change. So practice, practice, practice. You can't really break Blackboard. Sometimes it takes a while to figure stuff out. Um, so George, you want me to go straight into the grade book? Or I, th I think maybe I'll talk about discussions first. Um, I mean, basically, yeah. yeah. Okay, so basically in all of your courses, you're gonna have a content area and um, hopefully everybody's aware of that. And then you need to make sure that your edit is on uh, in order to do any of this. Once your edit's on, you'll see these topics across the top um, to basically build content. So you can add an item or a file. A file would basically be a syllabus or a Word document, right? You can add JPEGs, uh, PNGs, you can add video, you can add web links. So you can really build your content out here. Your assessments are basically the assignments um, and then the other, I, I would really just stick with assignments. And then your tools are um, the discussion board. I'm gonna wait for the discussion board because it's a little bit trickier um, because there's a, dis so the forum is sort of underneath the discussion board. The discussion board is the big topic and the forum is the subtopic. But um, what I, I really wanna talk about then is the grade book. One thing you should know, because uh, that's what everybody I guess wants to hear. One thing you need to know for those who don't know it already, is the course management area, anything below this line that says course management does not, repeat, does not show up in the student view. So when students log into the class, they don't see it, right? They don't see all of these things, but you do. And one of the things you're gonna see is the grade center, okay? Um, you have two ways. So let's say um, you're done with your first week of class and you need to grade items, right? You can do it two ways. The way I do it, which I find easiest, is you just go to needs grading. Um, I don't have any students in here, obviously, because it was from last spring, but you will have students in there. And what you're going to see is a list of things that they've done. So if they have submitted their assignments, if they've submitted their discussion board, you're going to see it. And you can grade all of them at once, right? And you just sort of click into that. It's pretty easy to use as long as you know where to look. The second thing you can do is the the full grade center. That's where you're going to see, again, I don't have students. Oh, I do have students here um, left over, so I don't want to really do anything. What you're going to see then is um, your list of students. And then let me scroll over here. Um, these, these are the assignments that I set up previously in the previous uh, um, showcase or uh, orientation or whatever you want to call this. Um, I set these up. Let's say Tiffany here submitted assignment two. I'm gonna basically view the grade details, right? Which aren't there, but you can um, 
the, the assignment would be here, you would download it, you would look at it, and there would be a commenting area. Um, I prefer, I prefer oh, there's a big lever right there. Someone just uh, went off the mute. Um, I'm not sure. Are you still getting a reverb? Okay, that's better. I, I apologize. Um, I just joined the meeting. I'm sorry for being late, but I, I couldn't figure out my mute thing. I apologize. Sure, no problem. Um, okay, so I prefer to grade through the needs grading area. It's a lot faster. It's a lot. Uh, and if you if you do it in the grade center, then you basically have to do it one by one. So I would highly recommend doing in the needs grading. Okay. And there's a place for you to add comments. Make sure that you're doing that for every student. Um, in some institutions I've worked at, they want you to download every paper. I mean, I know you guys have studio courses and all sorts of things, but if it's a lecture course and it's a, a word assignment, they want you to download it and basically give feedback. Um, I don't recommend that. That takes a really long time. I do try to make a number of comments back to the student though without line editing the document as to what they did well and or where they can improve. Um, one thing about feedback is, and you know, you guys have been grading for a long time, not necessarily in, in an online format, but I always try to start out with something super positive, like really great start here or excellent job, but, or, you know, good start, but, you know, you needed to do this, this, and this, or you did an exceptional job and this is why. So keep it short, um, but make sure you give feedback to everybody. And that's, so that's where your grade center is. Um, you'll have your due dates typically on a Sunday. And so on Monday you can start grading. And so what a week from on the 13th of April, uh, you'll be able to see students who have submitted. You'll probably see it sooner than that. Um, so that's the grade center. Um, Okay, discussions are a little bit tricky. Before we leave Grade Center, could you do one other thing? Um, sure. I was yep. going to show it from mine, but our banner is down, and therefore I can't get into Blackboard. So, okay. Um, but could you show the um, column organization, how to maintain your columns? In the Grade Center? Yes. Oh, sorry. I need to go to the full grade center. I mean, I personally would not mess with your columns unless you have to, right? Because as you create the assignments or the discussion boards and you add points, they're going to show up here. Here's your point total. Here are the um, assignments with the with the numbers on them. The one thing I do not do ever and institutions that I've worked for are like, we will not do weighted grades because it's very confusing for students. So what you can do is delete a column right there, right? Or you can hide it. I just, if I, you know, if you're not gonna use it, I would just delete it and there it goes. I would say don't delete something unless you really don't want it to be there because it's a lot harder to add it back in. Okay, I don't know if you want more than that. I personally yeah, yeah. would not recommend messing with your uh, columns here to tell you the truth. One of the things uh, we don't have that delete column function available to us. So typically oh. we have to do it through the manage. You just hide it. it. Yeah, manage and move it to a hidden column and, or things like that. Or if you are you know, I, I have a tendency to put in a column each week for attendance and participation where I plug in points for them. That doesn't come in through a discussion board or- Oh, okay. So inserting a column and organizing those columns to a logical week one, week two type of thing. But I can do a yeah. short video for that and put that- Yeah, I actually don't see a place to add a new column. It should be under your manage. Well, you can uh, oh, here? You have, you have create a column. We'll allow you to do it. Uh, at the oh, left I see right here. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, um, <laughs> you guys, yeah. So typically, yeah, so there you go, create column. I mean, I can show you. I've never done this before, but attended has been uh, week one, right? Yep. Are you giving them breaks? And I would give them like, uh, I usually use 15 points 
six for each lecture and three for professional points of being on time and being ready. So points possible is 20, let's just say 20. Yep. And you can start a due date or an end, end date if you want. And then you're just gonna, so include this column in the grade center. Yes, show this column to students. Yes, it shows that. Yeah. And then you've got a column in there that you can put in points for attendance and participation. It'll be all the way at your right hand side. Okay. There you go. Attendance. You might want to make it shorter, like week one ATT or something, so you can actually see it. But if you hover on it, you'll see it right there. Yep. Well, good to know. I ne never have had to do attendance, and I try to not create uh, havoc with my gradebook because then it can also get very, very long. Um, Where do you post assignments? Excuse me? Where do you post assignments? Well, the students will, um, let me turn this off. The assignments go in the content section and then they will show up yeah. in your book. Right, so let's say I'm a student now, right? And I have assignment week three, right? That's built in there. I am going to, and I'm a student, so I can see it's 100 points. And I've set all this up previously in the previous um, orientation. So it's 100 points. I'm the student now, I browse, I wrote it on a Word document, I browse my computer, right, and I upload it just like a regular Word document, and then I submit, right, and then once that student submits it, then it will show in the grade, in the needs grading or the full grade center. It's really easy, I mean, student, that's probably the easiest part for students is, is submitting assignments because it's just an upload like you do everywhere else, but that's in the content area. Yeah, Momo, when uh, you set up the assignment correctly, when you put points in, it automatically creates the column in the gradebook and it yeah. automatically sets up the submission portal for the students. Yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't believe layout, uh, layout of our, our Blackboard is exactly like what I've seen here. So I, I think we have different layout. I don't recognize this uh, entries here. Maybe content is there, but I'm not sure. Uh, you Momo, should have a content somewhere. Momo, this is George. It's a different color scheme, but other than that, it's essentially the same. And when you came into your shell, you have um, down to the tools item, you have those items that are in your empty shell. So, uh, and and while Lou, Lou's uh, screen that she's using is from a different organization that has a different color scheme, everything that she's showing us is stuff that we have in our system. Yeah, this is just one of the NSAD courses when from Laureate. It's just different, held slightly, but. but the other thing you can do, I mean, whoever it, it looks, it sounds to me like you probably need to practice a little bit and just play with it. I mean, there's con, there should be a, no matter what, there should be a content button there. You absolutely need to make sure your edit mode is on or you're not going to be able to do anything. But you can, you know, like I said, add the file, which would be a Word document. You would label that as your syllabus. I can do that right now uh, just to show you. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna call out my syllabus. Be oops, I can't type when people are watching me. I'm gonna browse my computer. I'm gonna get you know consulting letter whatever. Uh, I'm gonna make sure um, open a new in a new window. Yes or no? I always say yes, but that's just me. And then uh, permit users to view. Yes. Track number of views, no. Select date and time, you don't want to do that with your syllabus. Most of these things should just be open, except maybe assignments, and then you submit it. And then it's going to sit there on your content page right there, right? So it's just uploading a document, which is pretty typical. You can do that, like I said, with the web link. You just have to label what it is. And then the assignments come in here, where you create your assignments, the same thing. And um, this one, you do have to add points. So assignment, uh, journal, uh, week two, week whatever. And um, here's your direction. 
questions, please submit. And um, just, you know, the abbreviated version of this, be very specific what you want them to do. 250 words, use resources, be very specific because they can't read your mind and you're not looking at them. If you have an attach, like a file that you've already created, that's fine. Or you can just um, cut and paste that content into the description here because that's what they're going to see. This one, you're going to want to put a due date, right? And it usually would be on a Sunday. I'm not going to put a time there because yet the last time it got messed up and the possible points, let's say, um, you know, 75 points or whatever. You can click through all of these, but you don't really need to worry about this because it's sort of set for that. And I also don't limit the availability, especially right now where you're just trying to get students in there. You submit and there it is journal and then I'm going to go to my grade center the full grade center and it's going to show up there with the 75 points okay um, and that's not that one it's probably at the it always whatever you submit goes to the very end so there it is right there that I just created does that make sense that help? Uh, I have a question for submission. Uh, what if I want the student submit to turn it in? There is, there should be um, a, I saw that, I thought it was in here. You can create one. It's by your assignments. Yeah, yeah. Turn and you can do it. Um, is that a grading option? Or what was it? It was no. It's pretty much the same method. I've just created it as an assignment and it'll just drop in through the turn it in portal as opposed to just into the grade book. But it'll also show right up in the grade book. So it's the same at, the, at my institution. There's actually a separate button for submit assignment or assignment and assignment would turn it in. So I'm not sure how it works here. Finish this one out. Just type a couple things in it and add it to your content. And you'll see okay. the change. Read it. Assignment seven. Ask. Sorry, that's not very good. <laughs> <laughs> that was an abbreviation, I must say. Yeah, yeah that was a very bad one. Uh, make sure to use Turnitin. Okay, I'm going to add points to it. Assignment files. I'm going to put a due date. Uh, I'm going to do it on the 19th. I'm going to do points possible, 150. Enable, blah, 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 submit. Now, what, go back to the Grade Center. And uh, let's see, where, so there's your assignment seven. Mm-hmm, hold uh, on. Yeah. And... Actually, if you go back to the where your assignment was in content and uh -huh. just click into, the, click into it. Yeah. Click into oh. the assignment, not, not, not in the editing, as if you were the student clicking into the assignment. There you okay. go. Okay. Click in. Uh huh. And it is ready to send it in to turn it in. So when you attach your file, it will go to turn it in. Oh, okay. So it's automatic for you guys. Yes. Yep. Okay. So it's automatic. You don't need to worry about it. As long as you set it up that way. Okay. Okay. Discussion boards. Um, discussion boards are a, a little tricky. Um, you just need to practice. You can't break it once again. A forum, so the discussion board is the big category and a forum is underneath a discussion board, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I need to create a discussion board forum, discussion board. I'm gonna link it to the discussion board page, which is what I just showed you. And then I'm going to create a new forum. So I'm going to create week three discussion board. I already created the other two. This is about X, Y, and Z. Okay. You also need to add points to that. Um, 
standard view. If you, yeah, most of these are gonna have a grade. So you're gonna say 15, make sure you give them at least reasonable points so that they, um, uh, I also grade all the threads, but anyway, um, and then you're gonna submit. So you've created the forum. Now you're gonna link it to the discussion board page. Oh, I guess I have to do that. Where is it now? Oh, there it is. Okay. Can I do it that way? No, it has to be this one. And then it's going to say next. Now, when I go in here, it should be here. Oh, I already did one. So here and also here. Okay. Oh, it's probably under here, though. Mm -hmm. No. I think, what I think what it takes a minute. Form, you have to deploy it by choosing oh. uh, discussion board up in the near the assignments or tools. Hey, um, George, can you talk for a second? Someone is knocking on my door, and I'm not sure who. Hold on. Yeah, absolutely. I'll be right yeah. back. Okay, we've lost um, uh, the screen for uh, the screen share, but. Um, what I want you to know is in Blackboard, and I'm sorry that uh, we don't have access into it right now. But once you are in a in your content area under Tools, there's a link for Discussion Board. And once you've created the forum, like like Lulu just showed us, we can then go into the Discussion for a Board tool and deploy that as a discussion for Week Three or whatever it is so that we will have a place where people will link into it. And I wish I could show you how that is, but uh, at this point, I can't. So hang in there. Let me just see if uh, Banner is coming up yet. Yeah, perhaps I can make a comment in the meantime. Yeah, yeah. I noticed the pattern. So whenever we reach finals, uh, we lose email. Uh, when we need a uh, banner, we don't get access to banner. When we are about to receive paycheck, we don't get access to the system. So somehow there is a pattern whenever we need something, it's not there. So I would talk to IT guy and find replacement. That's what we do in our business, you know. So if he is not able to deliver, you just find somebody who is. Okay, well, we could do that if it wasn't for the fact that everybody is under stress in the uh, IT department today. In fact, uh, in Baltimore, they have a system-wide severity level three outage that has knocked Banner out across the system. So they are in the process of re-upping it and getting it done. And they're hoping to have it done by 2.45 p.m. today, or no, 5.45 p.m. today, East Coast time. So within the next hour, they're hoping to be back up. So up until this has happened, I don't know that I have had an outage of banner in months, years, to where it's prevented me from being able to do what we're trying to do today. So George, I'm back. Email. Sorry. Come on back. I'm gonna go on mute again. Well, I, I'm not sure I needed to show anything else again. Did someone else want to see anything else in Blackboard? Because I I did the grade book and the disc. I, this is, I, you only have 20 minutes now for Microsoft Teams, so. Yeah, so, well, let's, let's just say that we can't go and do any more visuals on Blackboard because we don't have access into Banner. Banner's down across all the whole world get system. So, um, but Teams is still up and working. So uh, let me take a quick jump over to Teams. I'm gonna go back to um, the hub just so everybody takes a look there again. And we will in fact, um, hang on. back to the hub. Let me share my screen so that you're seeing what I'm looking at. And um, uh, 
back to Teams. Okay, are you seeing my screen? I'm going to guess that people are. Yes. Okay, so in yes. the hub, yes. we have set up the faculty teaching resources link. This is an item about how to post your syllabus and post your computer requirements for your particular class in both Blackboard and in Teams. And then we also, under files, there's some Blackboard help. That is um, set up. This one's from Lucy. There's because uh, Lucy and Carrie have been working diligently to get some of these things up in time for everybody to have some help. Um, but the ones I want to show you, the links to the training videos, showed them before. I've got them here in a Word doc. And the first of our session from Tuesday is here. The one from yesterday was there. The one for today will be here. And the um, the other one that I put in here earlier today is that sample of that classroom uh, discussion that I had with students. So you can see and, and, and learn a how comfortable they are with this system and b um, how many different issues we've run into that they're dealing with. Now, I'm going to go back to our. I'm sorry, can you just uh, um, see? I, I just want to see again how you got to that page because that looks like a good page. So, can you just take us back sure. just quickly through the getting to it? Okay, so Thanks. can you see my? This is my whole batch of. Yes, of teams. so, so, I have so some you're on them. Teams and then you go to Hub for the faculty. Hub is, okay. is where we're going. This is our. I'm going to call it our informal faculty gathering place. Oh, okay. And then faculty teaching resources, the YouTube video that Lucy posted, and the links to the um, the training sessions are in links to training sessions, and then the document. Got it. Okay. Thank you. So, and this will be on the video too, so you can track it back. Um, one of the things that we discovered today with that student uh, section is I asked them as a after the class assignment to go back and look at the video. And because George? I wanted to see <clears throat> if they're George? able to watch the video. And um, I, I'm getting, is somebody asking questions? Uh, yes, George, this is uh, Joe and I, I apologize for interrupting. Um, Denise asked, uh, asked me to join in real quick just to make sure everybody's okay um and just to make sure everybody knew that there was a system outage with uh laureate wide with uh, access to the faculty portal as well as the student portal so of course as you all know you're, you're not able to get in through the uh through ssb currently um there they should be up within an hour or two so um the, I, I do know they're working hard to get everything back up uh joe this is Dario. Is there a way um, to log into Blackboard without going through Banner? Um, there is a way, um, but it is it's a different type of account, and we don't have faculty members set up like that. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. No yeah. worries. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Sorry for interrupting. Okay. So one of the things I was sharing with you is that when I sent the students to go check out the video, we started getting Michelle as one of our students. The video was up there. It was showing. She went to try to play the recording and she gets an invalid authorization token. I have a feeling this is coming into play with the issue of them coming in with the student credentials and not being in our domain. So I'm going to put a uh, um, support ticket in on this to find out how we can get around that. One of the uh, things I did today is I- I've seen this before and I think there's actually, uh, there's um, some access uh, um, options that you can set in the group. Uh, it, it's a matter of how deep in the group the content is stored. 
Who is speaking? Uh, it's Dario again. Sorry. Yeah, Dario. It's uh, it seems to be a matter of uh, the domains that the students can't get at it because it's stored in the uh, the what other domain. Can Questions they get to other? Can they get to other content in Teams? They can get at as guests. They're able to get into the Teams. Remember, they're all in the team as guests. Uh, but for example, I, so for example, I wonder. I wonder if there is a way to embed a viewer as an app within Teams that digs from the location that is inaccessible to the students as guests, and then shows it in the team shell. Uh, since I've been working on it today, let me give you some things that I've learned uh -huh. that may be useful for people to try. But once again, I'm counting down. I think I have 96 hours left till class is open. So lots of creations we're not going to be able to do. We've got to have some workarounds that we may be able to yeah. fix later on. But one of the things that I did was I uploaded it to um, to YouTube and put a YouTube link in so it could get at it because the YouTube link is not um, domain specific. So I also looked at, can I take the link from stream and put it in my Blackboard? As Lulu showed, being able to, um, um, you know, when we want to put content in, YouTube videos and other streaming videos are content that can be put in Blackboard. So it may be that the access to stream is a problem for the students, but for the faculty, it's not a problem. That's where your videos will be stored. And then you can upload them, download them, move them as you see fit. But this was an interesting thing. Assuming that they would be able to go look at the videos from within that class, not so much. Okay. And um, that was one of three students who responded to that. Um, George, I'm sorry, this is Andre. Uh, um, all right, if you're all okay with the recording, um, we, we do that. So I'm not sure who's got their mic open in the background. Andre started to speak and got stepped on. Uh, sorry, that's my fault. I was I was checking one of my streams to see what the access problems were, and he started playing. I apologize, and I was in on mute. <laughs> okay, Andre, uh, go back on to um... George. Uh, did you say we can or cannot post the uh, let's say the stream link into the Blackboard? I have not been able to because Banner went down between the time I did this class this morning and now I have not been able to have one of my guinea pig students test it from inside Blackboard. I, I understand. So I will I will post it in the faculty resources as soon as we know that solution. OK, so but for right now, know that you can be recording your classes and we will come up with a work around that will allow you to be able to have your students look at those classes afterwards. Hey, wait, while we're on this subject, can I ask you a quick question? Yes. OK, I've scheduled the uh, sort of I opened another channel under my course and I scheduled an orientation session for tomorrow morning. I saw that. OK, so some people, some students already replied, but now I'm looking at that orientation session and it says Meeting ended, three replies, and this is for tomorrow morning. So I'm not sure if if the replies mean that the meeting, you know, that they replied or because I haven't really started the meeting. OK, so if you go to your calendar. Yeah, the calendar is fine. And if you go to. I'm going to go to my test session from this morning. Yeah. And I'm going to look for under my scheduling assistant. Does it show me all my attendees? Right. No. One of the other things that I learned today is OK, so this is a meeting that I set up through the Teams 
portion, and I did not send an alternate email to them because I wanted to see what happened. All of them received the um, invite by my sending it out through Teams. Now, I know on Andre, the one that you sent out went out through Blackboard, right? Well, I did both. I set up a meeting yesterday, and then today I sent out, uh, uh, because only four students or five students responded, so I sent out uh, another email through Blackboard. Yeah, I do not know whether you can anticipate that all of your students can even, I mean, today is the very first day they have access to Blackboard. Well, of course, no, 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 I do not anticipate them all to respond. I just, you know, I'm just wondering, you know, because I, I, I wanted, I want them all to know that we're having this session. But I'm a little bit confused and concerned about that. It says when I click on it, it says, uh, you know, meeting ended. Yeah, uh, without being able to see your screen, I can't really comment much on it, but we would need okay, to take a we'll look see at what that. Happens maybe, tomorrow. maybe you and I can schedule a time after the meeting to where you can share your screen with me. That's not what you do. Thank you. Um, George, yeah. <laughs> George, this is Mitra. Um, I came in late, but I have a question. Maybe it's a dumb question, but I really have to ask if you don't mind. Um, it's about uh, a course uh, notebook or uh, something to this respect that I'm wondering what is the difference between this and individual folders for each uh, session of teaching? So excellent question, Mitra. It brings me to a point where I will admit that I don't know the answer to that, but I want to show you all where the number one resource for team questions like that is. So in the lower left-hand corner of your screen, yeah. there is a button called help. Oh, okay, there, I know, I have used that. And there is a topics issue. So if we type in class notebook, mm -hmm. it should give us a series of articles we can look at for how we do it. And we're particularly, because this once again is a new feature that deals with educators and students, this is probably the most of the information that you have. As I have drilled down deeper in some of these things, I found that they are, there are tech people who are trying to assemble the tail section of the plane while we're flying across the country. OK, they're still trying to build some of this out. Some of the features that they put up. So, you know, if you're familiar with folders and notes and things like that, I would go with those for right now and not worry about whether a feature we don't know is available at this time. I see. Yeah, I understand. OK, I was just, I was just for curious. everybody to know there is some really good training on what's out there. The what's new button up here at the top brings up things that are happening daily because most of this training starts as of March 2nd. So a lot of this education side is new, not only to us, but to the Microsoft Teams team as well. So. Be sure to look in here first for information. And yeah, with somebody knocking on the table for me. <laughs> Thank you, George. Oh, you're welcome, Mitra. Okay. So, um, oh, that was a mean leaving. Bye, I mean. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I have found that this is something I've been going to more and more, particularly the last couple of hours as I am trying to, as the, the questions become more focused, I'm able to go in there and get more focused help. So I, I, I want you to all know that I am committed to continuing 
to try to learn and run ahead of you. But anything that you find, if we share it in the faculty hub, then it will be available for us to go in, clean up, and share with everybody. So let's realize this is truly a learning community process as we're going. And while the obstacles I see between now and Sunday are making sure that our students have a seamless opportunity to enter teams from Blackboard and that they have the ability to see the content that we are recording and presenting by being able to bring it back into Blackboard. I think those are the most important elements that I'm going to focus on to make sure that we're ready. I think there are other things, you know, individual. There's a lot of videotape that we've we've stored already that you can go back and look at. Uh, I have not yet had the time to break them down into topical snippets to put in there, but we're going to be working on that so that you will have those resources available to you all as well. So other than me showing you more about um, specific elements in Teams, I'm going to just open it up to if you can use it. Wait a second, I haven't looked at the chat board. Let's look at the chat board and see what we have. Uh, this is the chat board from today. Oh, the students submitting assignments. One of the things that we talk about at um, at some length in that class that I held this morning with the students is the assignments that I had done in Teams. None of them were able to get to get them to function. So once again, I think because the assignment was created in Forms and Forms is part of our Office 365 suite, it's locked behind that divide. So I'm strongly suggesting all of your assignments should be assigned in Blackboard. Even though there is an assignment tab up above, let me go into the classroom, the general classroom. There's an assignment tab up above here. It appears that it is not functioning for new school because of the two sided system. So for the initial goal, until we get a resolution to that, please make your assignments all in Blackboard. OK, back. Somebody else have a question there? I lost my chats. Yeah, George, I have a I have a quick comment here. Yes, uh, I thought the the setup was that all grading is done through Blackboard. So my understanding was that all assignments must be in Blackboard. Correct. OK, yeah, just wanted to check. Thank you. Yeah, but because people have seen that assignments uh, link up at the top, there are some people who are, you know, exploring and seeing if there may be a better way to deliver stuff. But I absolutely agree that it is. Uh, it's important that we keep all grades in Blackboard and therefore if we put all assignments in Blackboard, that'll be the easiest way to do that. Um, yeah, George, I do have a question. Uh, OK, Momo, go ahead. Yeah, how did Lolo present if if we uh, couldn't get access to uh, Banner or anybody couldn't get access? How did she present? Um, this is mystical powers. This is Lulu. I have um, that was. Uh, I'm not sure to tell you the truth, but I went in through a different. I didn't go in through Banner. I went in directly to Blackboard, but it's an old access from about three years ago. It still works. Uh, okay. So it was an accident. <laughs> Lulu had the. Um, the privilege of having a job of being one of the key people in overall online education at Walden. She was in at a power level that none of us mere faculty or mortals are able 
to get it wasn't out. quite that interesting, but it was a direct. I didn't have to go through Banner. I had. I just had a direct Blackboard link. That's why. Correct. It, yeah, but you guys don't have that. You have to go through Banner. I mean, I was also teaching the classes, and if I was going in as an instructor, I would not have access. I was just a bypass. Yeah. Thank so, you. Yeah. So once again, we've exposed one of uh, Lulu's superpowers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, for sure. Okay. Um, more cumbersome. Have discussions in teams. Uh, once again, we can't capture discussions in teams. Uh, although if you watch the video, the 16 minute video of that class, you can absolutely have discussions, not written discussions, but synchronous discussions in teams. It was very easy for me to post a question verbally to the class for them to raise their hand in chat and then for us to go in the order that they put their hand up in chat and have them speak to that discussion point. And then once everybody had had that round of being able to make their initial point, then everybody was able to talk in an open discussion forum. But other than the video, we weren't able to capture that for a grading purpose. So yes, you can have discussions, but you can't have a discussion board in um, in teams and the discussion board is crucial because you need to remember not every student is going to be able to attend every synchronous session and so if they are asynchronous they need to be able to participate in the discussion with their classmates which is why the discussion board and blackboard is the key tool that we need to use does that make any sense to anybody um, okay, Alan, MS Teams, Alan, Dario. I can't see your little uh, clip there, but I will look at it in the larger one later. Uh, Dario, uh, could you post a link here, George? Teams for Education and place it. I'll check with the art media on what she's looking for there. Andre Blackboard is working now. Oh, that would be a nice feature. Let me just take a peek and see if I've got a problem loading page. All right. Our banner is up. So everybody who is worried that they'll never get back in banner again, they'll get back in banner again. Thanks. OK. Oh, uh, George. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I'm back in Banner, and I can confirm that I don't have same layout as Lulu had. And uh, remember my comment about not really uh, recognizing content, I don't see content on my banner. So what what did I do wrong, or what? Do what I do? is what is your course number? I can quickly self enroll and go in there right now. What's your course number? CM two o two dash one construction estimating spring twenty twenty. CMT. Say it again. CM two zero two. Two zero two. Last one. Hold on, I can self enroll in all your courses as well. That's another superpower. Yes, I tried to get that one this morning after seeing that, and yeah. it was turned down in seconds. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, they don't give it to a lot of, they don't, they're pretty stingy with it. Yeah. So, um, Here's CM202 on the screen right now from uh, spring of last year. And this is, did you teach it last spring? I did. Okay. No, George, so, that's mine. Oh, from so last spring. Yeah, that's mine from last year. Um, yeah. I think, Momo, you taught this in the summer. Is that right? 
Yeah. Yeah. So there, there was uh, we we offered it twice. Uh, yes. Okay. But I taught it spring. Momo taught it summer. So I'm going to show you a trick in our system. You're looking now at the layout that's going to be on every one of our courses. But you see that anytime there's a yellow box here, it means you can use it to add content. And so with edit mode off, those yellow boxes go away. Okay. So yellow uh, box on. I can go here and say I want to add a content area, and I can call it Momo's stuff. Yeah, I have the answer, George. It I is can click on available to users. I can hit submit. It's in there, and now I can use that as a place to put information. Okay. Okay. So you can use content, which I think is where Steve, you had your stuff in there. Yeah. So you've got all of your different types of things, lecture notes. So we went into there. We'd probably look deeper and see uh, all the different types of estimating and chapters that you're working on. So that's in his contents. But you could just as easily name it um, Lulu's recommendations or anything that you wanted to. But you want to may have stuff that makes sense to your your students. Thank you. And I'm looking at your section and it looks to me to, I mean, it looks like you have a lot of stuff in there. You have a content area. Yes, yes. Oh, I see. On and off. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, edit mode uh, has to be on. To yes, for on. sure. But that, yep. that, that is the answer. Oh, okay, and there you go. Take a, look, take a look at your screen. Because if you hide the link or unhide the link, okay, like right now I put Momo stuff in here. If I want to hide that link, um, I want to hide that link, I just go up here and click on hide link. And you can see it has a slight slash across there. And therefore, when we go to edit mode off, it's gone. I see. One thing to note is sometimes that left hand menu isn't there. And all you see is kind of a blue line on the side, a vertical line. You, and the little arrow, you have to click on that if it's not there, because that'll mess you up if you don't know it's not, if you don't know to click on that to find it. Yeah. Thank you. Steve, where do you see blue then? Well, mine kind of shows up as a blue vertical line on mine. Maybe it, there may be different color schemes and different people's stuff. I don't know. Okay. That that vertical line with the arrow attached to it, that shows up as kind of a blue hatched line on mine. Yeah. So let's see. What else? I think I you can change the color scheme in these things. You can do some levels of personalization. And I'm not sure where it is because I haven't had the time in my life to do that. Maybe it's where this color wheel is. Oh, look at that. That's right where it is. Mm -hmm. So if we wanted to do it in fuchsia, we could do that. So the color scheme, we just have the default color scheme is what what it'll come up for for you so and and please remember this while each one of you has your own personality your students are going to be in five or six classes if they have to look in different places under different folders for different things i guarantee you you'll set them up to miss stuff that you're trying to do so let's try to be as consistent across the board. Lulu's concept of content is where we put all of the things that we want them to work with. Assignments is a tab where we, you know, if we want to put them in an assignments folder in the left hand bar or in a an assignment uh, list under content, let's try to do a similar thing across systems. Because I've had students who say, well, 
I couldn't find the link to the final exam. Of course, this is usually 10 days after the final. And um, they'll say, well, that's not where it was in such and such a class. So be clear to show them how you're laying out your Blackboard and be clear that you are able to show them how to use it. It's already uh, coming up on 10 minutes after two. Let's just see if there's two more questions. And then I'd like to wrap it up because my voice is going away. I really appreciate everybody typing the stuff into the meeting chat. A um, couple points about the meeting chat thing is number one, it's not a place for personal or um, digging messages because it remains in existence. Okay. The chat board will be available when you go into your chats. If we wanted to look at the chat board from today, it's all in here and will be there for us to look at. And George, before you go, I have two things I want to say. So Very good. Should I say them? Yep. First thing is you can download uh, Microsoft Teams onto your iPhone. I've actually downloaded it and it's really handy for chats and things like that. So you don't have to log into your computer, just so you know. Um, the second thing is I just want all of you guys to be optimistic that you can actually do this. The school, the university I'm working with just started on Monday. Um, there's a big learning curve for a lot of faculty and uh, they're, they're getting through it. So I am available to help if you need any additional help, probably not over the weekend, like you know, 11 p.m. on Sunday, I'm East Coast time, but any time between now and then, and even after the courses start, you don't have to build out all of your content for the quarter uh, by Monday. You know, I would do two, two weeks at a time, honestly, um, but you can definitely be in touch with me if you need additional help uh, with anything. And uh, I'm George is the Microsoft Teams guy. I know a lot more about Blackboard than Microsoft Teams, but it's actually a pretty easy platform. I've been playing around with it too, and it's not too hard. Yep. Well, and, and I think that one of the things that was really um, uplifting for me today when I was on with uh, uh, guinea pig students is they're not worried about this. They've lived in the, as much as we teach on ground, they've lived in the online environment through middle and high school. So they're comfortable with a lot of the things that we're nervous about. So what is the things that you said uh, yesterday that everybody has permission to not be perfect? Just realize that. You don't have to worry about being perfect and some of your students, I'm going to tell you by week two, are going to be able to help you with some of the technical stuff because they won't be afraid to go test it and try it. So worry about your content. Don't panic about the technology. I think everybody's capable of doing a good job on this. And I look forward to a, uh, hopefully we'll do a, virtual wine and cheese party by the end of week three where we can all sit around and talk about what we've learned and um and share it with each other just and you, yeah and you don't have to learn everything you just have to learn how to do some basics don't try to learn everything at once just make sure you know how to do a few things that are necessary assignments you know how to grade in the grade book how to create a discussion board how to do your meetings or live chat in your teams and you know how to upload the syllabus and some resources and once you learn how to do that it's going to it's going to get a lot easier as you go right and since i can't be at campus and neither can you guys i you know my door's always been open for people to stop in and say hey can you show me how to do this i'm still willing to do that and i'm available full time for faculty for that um, period. That is my assignment for the spring quarter is to mentor the faculty to be able to do this as good as we can 
and then also to learn how can we use the tools that we're given even better. So please don't hesitate to reach out to me with an email. The easiest thing is I did it uh, yesterday afternoon uh, with Ron. He sent me an email. We set a time. We went online and in five minutes we answered his questions and got him headed in the right direction. A lot of these things can be done that quickly. So please feel free to do that, to use that resource. Don't forget the hub. If you come up with some idea or something that's interesting, please come into the general tab and just post it here so people can come in and see it. So if you had a spectacular success or a spectacular failure, post it so other people can learn from it because we need to learn from each other on this. And with, and that, with that, I'm ready to... What is the what? most important thing at the last part of the meeting that we have to do, Lulu? Remember? Uh, Stop the recording. Stop the recording. Yes, thank you, dear. <laughs> I'm stopping the recording and thank you all for spending your time with us this afternoon. Actually, these last three days. Yeah, I thank you. Lulu. It's really thank been you. terrific. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye. 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 Thank you. 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 Thank you.